Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Flight Pack 3, which is another item from the recently updated Travel Collection. Recently we took a look at the Travel Pack 3 and the Travel Pack 3 Small, and like those bags, this has received quite a few upgrades over the prior version. We looked at the Flight Pack 2 on the channel a while back. I really enjoyed using that bag. It has, you know, the same kind of stylish air aesthetic that's going to work great, particularly for work travel. It can work as a shoulder bag, a briefcase, or a backpack, but there were a few issues that I had with the prior version and I was very excited to see that Air addressed almost all of those and has created just a really solid bag that I'm excited to walk through with you guys. In this video I'm going to be talking about my experience using it over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, talk through the updates from the prior version and I'll also talk about how this compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, you have the same kind of modern and techy aesthetic that we've seen in many of Air's other bags. It almost looks like a smaller version of the Travel Pack 3 or the Travel Pack 3 Small, which we featured in an earlier video. And this is an aesthetic that I've always been a fan of. I think it's very versatile. It fits in well into pretty much any environment that you might take it into, whether you're traveling, going into the office, or exploring a city. As far as the materials, you have the same 1680D ballistic nylon that we've seen on Air's other bags. It's very durable. It offers a nice amount of weather resistance. And you also have some great YKK zippers all throughout, Duraflex buckles. So it's just a very rugged bag that feels like it's gonna hold up well over the longer term. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that there is an external water bottle pocket similar to the one that was included in the previous version. This is able to hold the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos. I like that the compartment has some elasticity, so if you have a thicker water bottle, you should be able to squeeze it in there. One thing I will call out is that this is a little bit shallow in my opinion. So I always have a sense when I lay the bag down like this that the water bottle could slip out. I don't often place my bag down like this, but just something to keep in mind. Still like the amount of capacity that it offers, and then it's super nice that you can zip this up and keep it out of the way when you're not using it. And then on the other side, you have what is one of the biggest differentiators of the flight pack among Air's line, which is the handles that allow you to carry this like a briefcase. I like that these have been updated from the previous version. They, they managed to sit a little bit more flush against the side of the bag. That was one of the things I didn't like about prior versions of the flight pack is that the handles tended to stick out a little bit and it gave it a, a strange look in my opinion. These kind of hug the bag a little bit more when they're not in use when you're using this as a backpack. So I really like that improvement there. They have this snap closure to help keep them together and make it easier to grip the bag when you're carrying it in this mode and then you can open it up when you need to. So I really like the improvements there. This is a, a very comfortable way to carry the bag when you want to use it as more of a briefcase. And then you also have the D-rings on this side that pair with a removable shoulder strap which allows you to carry this like a briefcase. The shoulder strap that's included with the bag feels great. It offers the same amount of padding that we've seen in Air's other harness systems. They have these uh, clips that make it very easy to get the strap on and off the bag and it just gives it a very professional look in my opinion when you're carrying it like a shoulder bag so it's nice to have that flexibility and then you can fully remove it if you prefer to just use this as a backpack. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 20 liters, which is a really great daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and it didn't feel like I was short on space. I also like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it maintains a pretty slim silhouette, making it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, this is an area that's been improved quite a bit from the previous version of the bag. I love how the straps have been implemented here. They have just that same padding that we've seen on Air's other bags. They have this meshy material on the inside to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders. I like the curved shape of the straps and then they also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap with a magnetic buckle to help distribute the weight. And then one thing I want to call out about these straps on the flight pack specifically is that they don't have the contouring that's been included in bags such as the city pack, which allow the straps to kind of fit on your shoulders a little bit more comfortably. I'm a big fan of that system. I think that these straps are still quite comfortable. It's not a huge deal. 
um, but I did want to call it out and I think it makes sense for the flight pack given the fact that you can actually hide the shoulder straps away. They have these buckles at the bottom that are very easy to detach and then you can tuck the straps in at the top and just have a much kind of cleaner overall look when you want to use this in briefcase or shoulder bag mode. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable and a big improvement over the Flight Pack 2, which didn't have any sort of breathability or padding really. It was just kind of a flat, simple back panel. Here you have the same paneling that we have on Air's other bags, which I've always been a fan of. It has just a lot of breathability. I like the elevation to create the air channels to provide you with some ventilation while you're walking around. And then they've also added this really nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the layout here will feel very familiar to many of Air's other bags, such as the City Pack or even their work collection. It's a consistent layout that has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. One thing I wanna call out about the Flight Pack 3 specifically is that since this is a hybrid bag, uh, some of the pockets can be a little bit interesting to use. This is always a challenge, I think, with this style of bag, regardless of the company that's implementing it. When you're carrying this like a briefcase or a shoulder bag, a lot of the pockets are vertically oriented. They're not oriented in a way that makes it super easy to reach in and grab what you need. So you'll notice that as we get into something like the laptop compartment, where if you're holding it like a briefcase, they do have the zipper come all the way down enough that you could reach in, but because the sleeve is vertically oriented, it, you know, it's just easier to pull it out when you're using it as a backpack. Same for most of these other pockets. So that's why I typically end up using this as a backpack. Uh, so something to call out, I think that just comes with the territory with this type of a bag. And the organizational layout is still one that I enjoy a lot. So starting off on the front, you have a quick access pocket with a nice aqua guarded zipper, zipper garage. It's nice that you have these tabs to allow you to easily open the compartment up. This is a little bit flatter, especially as you fill out the rest of the bag, but it's still a great spot for any items that you need to grab a little bit more regularly during the day. So in this one, I have just a mask that I still carry with me. I also have a deck of playing cards. I threw in a charger with a lightning cable to charge my tablet and my phone. And then you also have a lanyard in this compartment with a little carabiner, which is gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. At the top of the bag, you have another quick access pocket. This one has a locking style YKK zipper, so you can't really open it unless you flip the tab up, which is a nice little feature. You also have a zipper garage here as well to give you some protection against the elements. And this compartment offers a decent amount of space, and I really like that it has a soft fleece lining on the inside, so it's gonna give some protection for anything more delicate that you wanna store in here such as uh, reading glasses, a phone. In my case, I actually placed my Apple Watch in there. And then I also have my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case, which fit in there very comfortably. Um, and then pulling the compartment out, you can see how much volume it actually provides. When you fill this up, it is gonna take up some space from the main area, but it is absolutely fantastic to use, particularly when going through TSA to just toss in my wallet, my phone, and all those items that I don't want getting lost. The next area that we're gonna take a look at is a larger admin compartment that has a lot of internal organization. As I mentioned in my video for the Travel Pack 3, I like that the zippers on this have been extended down a little bit. It's not quite a clamshell opening compartment, but you can really get full view of everything that's on the inside. This is a little bit different from the prior version, so a great improvement there so that you can take full advantage of the volume that this compartment has to offer. It is a deep compartment, it goes all the way down, and here at the bottom you have kind of a space for any sort of pouches that you might wanna use or bulkier items. In my case, I have this little shadow pocket from GORUCK that has just some of the bulkier items that I didn't place into some of the other slip pockets. And then on the back of this compartment, on the bottom you have these two elastic slip pockets. I love the elasticity here as it just allows you to store bulkier items, but it also kind of closes the compartments a little bit to prevent items from slipping out too easily. These are a little bit suspended off the bottom as well. And in this compartment on the right one, I just placed my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And then next to that, I have a little tin that's gonna have some band-aids and ointment. Moving up along the compartment, you have another slip pocket here. It's gonna be a great spot for something like a portable hard drive, or in my case, I have a portable battery that I like to have with me to charge my devices. Same elasticity here. Then you have a slot that's gonna be great for a pencil or a stylus or a pen like I have here. This is the Everyman uh, Grafton pen. And then I also have uh, some additional slip pockets next to that. As usual, you have these pockets that are on top of each other. It's kind of difficult to use both of them together. 
in my opinion. I always end up kind of picking one of them. In this case, I left this mesh one emptier. I might throw my AirPods in here um, if I don't want to carry them in my pocket. And then I also have my Apple Magic Mouse on the compartment on the back. Above that, you have another zippered compartment, which is a great kind of catch-all space for any smaller items that you don't want floating around and that don't fit into these larger slip pockets. So in this area, I just tossed in a little manicure set that I like to have with me. And I also tossed in a stylus because I had my pen in the other slot. And then beyond that, I don't have anything else in this compartment, no internal organization or anything like that. And then on the back, you have a larger slip pocket. It's pretty deep and tall, so this is gonna be a good spot for a magazine maybe some documents or even a tablet if you wanna place your tablet here to get to it easier. In my case, I actually just placed my Kindle e-reader. And then the last area that we're gonna take a look at is the main compartment. One thing I forgot to call out earlier is that the zippers on the bag have the ability to lock so you'll have that extra peace of mind, particularly while traveling. Nice addition there. And then this main compartment zipper, it extends a little bit further on the right. Again, for when you're carrying this like a briefcase, you still can reach in and grab some of the items that you need to, but as you can see, all of the compartments vertically oriented again, so it's a little bit tricky to grab them. Regardless, a nice amount of space offered in this compartment, even though the bag is pretty slim. It's not the best for bulky items and pouches. It's not, it's, it's a layout that's a little bit constricting. So the Beat Studio headphones started to feel a little bit tighter as I packed the rest of the bag out. So that's something that you'll want to keep in mind, particularly if you're somebody who goes to the gym and wants to pack in shoes or a bulkier lunchbox, this bag might not be the best as far as the main compartment. As far as the items that I have in here, uh, as mentioned, I have my studio headphones here with their hard shell case. You can see here this uh, quick access compartment from the top when it's full kind of comes down here. And down at the bottom, I have my Air Slim pouch, which has a lot of the tech accessories that I like to have with me when I'm working remotely. I have a full-size moleskin notebook, and then I also tossed in my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside, and this does come up a decent amount if you wanted to toss in a packing cube to use for a quick trip. It's not really the intended use case, as mentioned. It's just not gonna be the best option for bulkier items, but you do have some flexibility. And then on the front flap, you have some additional slip pockets, the same elastic compartments. I didn't put anything here in this left one. And then on the right, I just tossed in my Tom Bin Ghost Wheel pouch, which has another bunch of small knickknacks that I like to have with me. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a little slip pocket that's gonna be a good spot to put something like a tablet. In my case, I have my iPad mini in here. This is suspended off the bottom of the ground, but it doesn't have any sort of padding. So that's something you'll wanna keep in mind, maybe use a case with your iPad, uh, but it's still nice that you have kind of a separate area to prevent everything from rubbing up against each other. And then on the back, you have a padded laptop sleeve. This has been updated to match the rest of Air's lines, which I absolutely love. So the sleeve is suspended off the bottom of the ground. It offers a decent amount of padding, and I like that on the back, they have the soft fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. This is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see that there's plenty of leftover space here at the top. And so pulling my device out, now with the sleeve empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And so no fleece lining on the front, which I would have liked to have seen as well. Uh, but the sleeve does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. And then again, because it's suspended and with the rest of the padding that's been included, it feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. So a really nice implementation in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. Same great build quality and organization that we've seen on Air's other bags. And if you're looking for a durable and stylish everyday bag that's also going to work as a solid travel companion, then this is going to be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Flight Pack 3 over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on Air's site as well as the other items that are part of the travel collection. Air's bags come in at pretty reasonable prices, especially considering the features and the build quality that they have to offer, and they also compare well to other similar bags in their respective price ranges. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Air City Pack, which was also released pretty recently. To me, that and this have almost identical aesthetics and layouts. The biggest difference is gonna be in the sizing. That one comes in at 14 liters, and it also doesn't have the side handles or the ability to add a shoulder strap. However, I do find the harness system on that bag a little bit more comfortable. It has that contouring that Air has started incorporating into some of their bags, which feels really great. 
and it has the same organizational layout, great build quality, excellent protection for your tech. So if you like this type of an aesthetic, but you want something that's gonna be a little bit smaller, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to check out. The next bag this made me think of is the Mystery Ranch 3-Way Expandable Briefcase, which is another fantastic hybrid bag like this one. It works as a shoulder bag, a briefcase, a backpack. It has a solid build quality. I really like the organizational layout on that. It has good protection for tech. It offers a decent amount of weather resistance, maybe not quite as good as this one. Some of the distinguishing features there are that one is able to expand to give you a little bit of extra capacity if you wanted to use it for a shorter trip or you just have to carry a little bit more with you on your day to day. That one doesn't have as breathable as a back panel as this, so it's not quite as comfortable as a backpack, but the straps are nice. The other big difference with that one is that the way that the pockets are all oriented are meant to work better as a briefcase or shoulder carry. You're able to reach down and grab everything easily. Uh, so that's different from this one, which is a little bit more backpack oriented. So something to think about, and depending on how you plan to use the bag more, uh, that will be something to consider. And if you like more of that kind of side access shoulder style organization, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of is the Topo Designs Global Briefcase, which is a really versatile EDC and minimal travel bag. It's offered in two sizes. There's a smaller size that's definitely more daily focused and a larger size, which has a suitcase style opening and a compartment that's meant to hold some of your clothes if you wanted to use it for a shorter trip. It has a, a little bit of a simpler organizational layout, but the pockets offer a lot of volume and flexibility. I don't think that one is gonna have as good a laptop protection as this. The sleeve isn't quite as padded, uh, but it does give you a lot of flexibility with its layout. It also has a pretty unique aesthetic. Topo has that sort of outdoorsy vibe, which, you know, helps your bag stand out. And, and it's just gonna be a, a different sort of a look. So if you want something that's more unique, that's gonna give you some extra pops of color, that's gonna offer a solid build quality and a decent amount of space, and that's gonna be a great option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Bellroy Transit Work Pack, which has been one of my favorite work and everyday bags of the past year. It just has a great build quality, the sophisticated and minimal aesthetic that Bellroy is known for. I love that it has a clamshell style opening. It comes in at about 20 to 21 liters, so it's able to hold enough for my EDC, but because of the simpler layout, it can actually work for minimal travel. It has a great suspended and padded laptop sleeve. It's comfortable to wear. That one isn't able to be used as a shoulder bag or a briefcase, but you know, for someone like me who prefers a backpack, that's totally fine. And it's just a very solidly built bag. It's gonna have a little bit of a simpler layout compared to this, but if you like Bellroy's aesthetic and you want something that's gonna be a little bit more backpack focused and that's gonna look great with a professional outfit, then that's gonna be another great option to keep in mind. With that being said, the Flight Pack 3 holds up really well against all those bags. And if you're looking for a comfortable and durable bag that's gonna offer a ton of organization and protection for your tech and can also be used as a shoulder bag, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the upgrades that have been made to the Flight Pack 3. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.